Unspoiled Network podcast. This is Some Spoiled House of the Dragon, the co-host, not switcheroo, the first watching return to Westeros HBO spoiler edition on Cut Uncensored and Too Hot for TV. In this episode, we are covering season one, episode six, The Princess and the Queen. In this episode, you're going to hear a little bit of a flippy flop from our usuals <laughs> because i had let go of expectations by now and was like sure we we could do that but rashawn <laughs> she felt a little differently welcome to unspoiled Welcome to the show, everyone. I am Natasha. I'm Rashawn. All right. Lay it on me, guys. Rashawn has prepared notes. <laughs> I, but not to be. I'm not just going to read my notes. No, uh, but she has to, She has like points she wants to get to, and I'm really excited about it. We, well, and, and we will get to them as we as we get through the episode. I, you guys, I watched this uh, almost three times. I didn't make it through the third watch all the way. Um. Because I wanted to be fair, you know, and I usually watch the episodes twice anyway, but I was willing to do a third watch for this episode because I really did not care for this episode. I, at one point in my first viewing, I literally got up and walked out of the room. Okay. When was that? (laughs) Because I saw your comment and I need to know when was the moment where you were just like, I can't. Lena's death. Oh, okay. That makes sense. And it wasn't even like a visceral reaction to the scene. Like, oh my God, this is too terrible. I don't want to watch it. Or I can't believe they're doing this to this character. I don't want to watch it. I said, get the fuck out of here. Out loud to my television. (laughs) And then got up and left the room to go like like, like, grab. Like it wasn't like a a storm out. But it was definitely like... No, <laughs> and then I and then I was just like got up and went into the other room to like grab something, and I ended up like dilly dallying so long that I had to rewind it because I had missed the next bit with Harwin because that's how long I was out Ooh, of the room. Damn. <laughs> so then I came back. I just I I just did not connect with this episode mm-hmm. on any emotional level, um, at all, and that was very very surprising to me because you know i've kind of been in it Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and uh it was not just the time jump right okay and it was not the change in in the actors because i knew that that was coming and i do want to say i really enjoyed both of the the aged up allison and renera um the actors playing them i thought did a really good job i'm especially smitten with the um the actor portraying uh Rhaenyra. Um, I think their name is Emma. Emma Darcy, maybe? That makes I, I think that's Raina Bell. I think so, yeah. And um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that their pronouns are they, them as well. So I'm gonna try to keep that in mind when I'm talking about them. Okay. Uh I love their performance as an adult Rhaenyra. I so it so it wasn't that either. But I just so much of this episode did not land for me in the way I think it was intended. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. Um, so I'm just going to start off just so everybody knows where I am. (laughs) That's fair. I think that the time jump, while maybe made sense as a sort of expedited storytelling device. Mm -hmm. And I have seen so many people out both in the wild and in groups talk about how we needed to be able to get to the good stuff. Yeah. Right. So I have been looking for. I had very much been looking forward to the good stuff TM. But I think they 
underestimated how much they were losing. I, and, I really agree with you. And I know that we still have four episodes in the season and there's going to be a season two that's been announced that I get a lot of people are also saying, well, they can fill in the blanks, you know, as we move forward with, with exposition or with flashbacks, you know, Mm. I mean, I guess if that's the way you've decided to tell the story, then that's just what I have to deal with. Do I think it is the best way to tell the story? I do not. Yeah. Yeah. And my last opening remark critique would be, if you are committed to the time jump in this fashion, that's fine, but maybe don't plan your big emotional moments for this episode to be 100% predicated on shit that I didn't actually get to see. Mm Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can't give me a big emotional suicide by dragon. For a girl I don't know. Yeah. And expect it to land in any real fucking way. Other than just being like, wow, that's a badass dragon. That's a lot of fire. And I guess if you have to die, that's a, that's a pretty cool way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> right? Yeah. So that was just that. That was a bummer too. But all right. Let's start at the beginning. All right. Um, well, <sighs> like you said, we uh, have jumped ahead quite a bit. We go immediately to Rhaenyra, who is in the middle of giving birth, and she has just finished, and it is not clear to us at this point that this is, like, her third child. Yeah, yeah, we don't know. But a a woman comes in and says that the queen wants to see the baby immediately. The queen queen requested the child be brought to her. Mm -hmm. And, uh... It is mere seconds. She has, she hasn't even dropped the afterbirth yet. Yep. Yeah, she when just she... hasn't dropped the afterbirth, but she's like insisting that they dress her, and I'm like, that dress is going to get ruined in like <laughs> a second. What are you doing? You're not hurting anybody but yourself. But um, she gets up and struggles all the way over there, looking a hot mess. Yeah. And. Again, it's unclear because of reasons why she is being forced to do this. Yeah. And I say forced, the baby could have been picked up and brought, but she was not willing to do that. She wanted to make a point. So Mm -hmm. she is choosing to do this like really dramatic, bloody walk. But um, what it turns out to be is that it is widely known she is giving birth to children that are not her husband's children. Yeah. Yeah. Which is quite evident in the fact that they do not have the white Valerian hair or uh, Targaryen hair. The baby does not look mixed race at all. And the features of the children that are older do not resemble her husband's features. Like, yeah he yeah. has a very long slender nose that's sort of like classically beautiful like he has a very symmetrical face and these kids have kind of rounded features a- allison calls them her plain face boy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of snub nosed a little bit um and evidently it's like an open secret everybody knows yeah but uh, her father won't admit it. So when we open up on this, you know, we don't know, like you're saying, we, we don't know the con- the full context of this, this summoning because we, you know, we don't know yet how many children she's had. That becomes, you know, is made clear in this sort of dialogue between um, Renera and Lander as they're making this, this long, painful trek. And it just... It just felt like it went on forever. And I have to say, I was annoyed by this. The episode is just opening. And I was, like, annoyed already at the beginning of the episode. Um, Just because of how long it took for her to get over there? The fact that... uh, So, a lot of what's happening here, and maybe I am just, you know, mentally a (laughs) slowpoke. This... The way Allison has has demanded the presence of this babe in this moment, 
I get that she is the queen, right? Mm-hmm. But, and this is probably because in, in this is my first exposure to a legit queen in George Martin's universe. Okay. We've never had a queen before. Yeah, I guess that's true. We've had Cersei is sort of pretend queen regent, you know, because of her boys. That's Say it. Say that to her face. <laughs> right? <laughs> so Allison, to, to my mind, is exerting a lot of control already off the bat. Mm-hmm. That at first, my assumption was like, okay, well, she must have Viserys, like, you know, co-signing. Uh, her nonsense gotcha you know but then when we see Viserys a little bit later he is not necessarily co-signing her nonsense at all Mm -hmm. he also just doesn't seem to be shutting down a lot of her nonsense so this power dynamic between Alice and Rhaenyra I was just like but you the heir to the throne though Mm. what are you doing dragging your sweaty you know after birth dripping down your legs you're still bleeding mm-hmm, <laughs> you know mm-hmm. what what is so clearly the show is trying to express a sort of power dynamic that exists now that i again found really jarring just like what <laughs> yeah yeah i definitely understand that and then i had to be like well maybe queens you know have Do much much <laughs> yeah yeah maybe when you're like a full-on queen sitting next to your husband who's the king maybe you you know you get to move through these streets differently i guess so it, again like an adjustment but i oh <laughs> <laughs> i didn't care for it <laughs> yeah that's fair i think that the thing that um kind of got to me was just so the walkover i agree did kind of take a long time and the point is supposed to be like how much she's but she's choosing to do this again so if she'd been forced it would feel very different but mm-hmm. she's coming over with an attitude right and uh and, and, it's and an it's attitude supposed- about something that she's done so yeah, it, and it's like a like i i get that like a lot of this is supposed to be showing us that Rhaenyra is still just as defiant and headstrong as we remembered her as a kid right mm-hmm. that's what this is supposed to be i think giving but she's in such a weak position here. It's not giving me that at all. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> agree. And so, okay. She brings a child in. Of course, Viserys is just delighted and doesn't want to see anything about the baby's actual, like, parentage. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, the <laughs> there's this weirdness between her and Eleanor. <laughs> and he is acting like it really is his child, even though we all know it's not, and he knows it's not. I thought. Which bit do you mean that he's acting like? So we're wa- well, they're walking away after they, their little meeting, um, and she says maybe. Uh, oh, about the name. Yeah, and she gotcha. the, the queen had said maybe soon you'll get one that actually looks like you. Mm-hmm. Um, he names the kid. What is he? Joffrey. And when she's like, you didn't even ask, he says, he's our child. Is he not? And I'm like, mm. Oh, yeah. No, no. I, t- I took that as being like, listen, we're playing this game. Mm-hmm. So I get a say. Right? What you going to do? Tell me to my face. It's not. Because it feels very much like even though everybody knows she's never literally said it to his face that yeah. it's not because when that comes up later in the episode when he tries to be like you know what maybe i'll just go to the stepstones because y'all don't even need me like that and she <laughs> and she's just like they are talking about our children and <laughs> just uh, are they though and yeah i deserve some say in the affairs of my own family um <laughs> <laughs> and this is when she says, you haven't seemed so interested in our affairs of late. And then she keeps walking and he stands still and we see the blood that's literally like littering the hallway as mm-hmm. she walks. Mm-hmm. Um, so at this point, we she goes to her rooms and Harwin is here with the two boys, his sons, and they have a dragon egg all prepared for this baby yeah. 
yeah. that will probably not be able to <laughs> connect with a tray. I mean, there's some Targaryen blood, so maybe. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the whole vibe here is just so off because she and he know, but, and and her husband knows, but can't admit it. And then the children just straight up don't know. So it's all <laughs> these different levels of, like, lack of information. You know? Yeah, it's it's very, it's 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 a weird moment where like Lenore is holding his his child his newest born child and she has to be like Sir Harwin would like to meet Joffrey you know mm -hmm. and Lenore has to hand over the child to the real father who I mean the show does have Christian Cole which we're gonna have to talk about that too mm. <clears throat> excuse me I didn't get the cough button in time sorry how dare you that took me by surprise <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this moment with Harwin meeting the baby and Laner leaves the room to give them privacy. Yeah. To have this moment. And, um, I just, I don't know, you guys. I just, I don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> so, I don't want to get too derailed. I know in the books that the Valerians are actually much more uh, like the Targaryens in their physical appearance, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So that in the books, looking like the children would, would be expected to have that Targaryen look, you know, um, and that they came out not looking like traditional Targaryens or Valerians is enough to cause like the rumors. I'm assuming that, that her having these children by Harwin is, is true to the books. Yes. Okay. It's right. like implied. No, it's never specifically like, Oh yeah. She said she fucked him, but everybody pretty much is just like, come on, right. look at him. So, so that's like a big deal. Right. Yeah. So I think what ended up happening and I'm, I really I don't know if the show meant to do this or if it happened consciously or it happened subconsciously, but choosing to cast black actors to play the Valerian family that's going to marry in and then have these children be illegitimate children be such a big part of the story mm. has me, unfortunately thinking differently about the decision to cast these actors in this role. Gotcha. And it doesn't make me feel particularly good. Yeah. I could see that. So that was a bit of a bummer. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Like uh, maybe it's not a big deal. I could just be reading it wrong and funky. Cause I didn't like this episode. You know what I mean? I don't, <laughs> I don't know if anybody else felt that way, but when, when we are looking at the children to see, you know, Oh, they don't look like their father. And then the father is black on screen. That just hits a little bit different. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I don't know if that was the intention or not, or if that's just like, you know, just the way it worked out. But I definitely made note of it. Yeah. You know? Yeah, definitely. That makes sense to me. And it was something that I hadn't occurred to me until reaching this episode. And mm -hmm. because, you know, it's for in the books, it's it's their features being very like snub nose and pug nose and whatever and their hair being like a muddy brown versus mm -hmm. the white and mm -hmm. that's really the main thing but the race aspect didn't it didn't even enter my head honestly about that whole like subplot and how that would play until we watched this even mm -hmm. though i knew that they were setting up for the two of them to get married so yeah i can understand that um, so he leaves them alone with the baby. Harwin is very proud. Three boys in a row. Mm -hmm. And then we mm -hmm. see like the kids going down to the dragon pit and trying to connect with the dragons. And it's this tiny little baby dragon that is like, it is very cute. Honestly, this dragon <laughs> is like the size of, ah, uh, what, what would we say? Maybe like a golf cart. <laughs> a little bit bigger than a golf cart it depends on if you're including the wings or what but uh we have the the prince that is yeah. trying to call him to heal and yeah, this is when we get to meet the other 
kids yeah. as well. We get to meet Becerra's and Allison's kids. I didn't like any of these children. Mm-hmm. That's I fair. Didn't like, I didn't like any of them. Uh, and they were also funny looking to the point of distraction. Uh-huh. Uh- <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Listen, I don't have a lot of good things to say. <laughs> So I, I I heard that they were we, we get another time jump. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it's true or not, but I heard that we get another time jump, and I think the kids are going to be much older. And I didn't read the whole article because of spoilers, but I did comment that like I'm so happy they're aging these kids up, so I don't have to see them. Again. Oh my god! <laughs> did you get jumped on? I don't know. I didn't go back. Good call. Good call. <laughs> um. So, yeah, we have him trying to, like, sort of train the dragon using Valerian to speak to it. And the dragon trainer who's got quite a burned fucking face. Yeah. Uh, this guy is is an old hand at this shit. We see the two. Oh, I do want to mention, too, real quick. I like that there's a translator because it looks like Renera's kids maybe don't speak Valerian very well yet. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Which, um, what's that about? <laughs> what is that about? I don't know. Like, I, 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 why wouldn't they be getting tutored from a very young age into this language? It seems weird to me. Maybe they're dumb. <sighs> you said it. I didn't say that. <laughs> I said they were funny looking. I didn't say they were dumb. <laughs> I almost wonder if there's supposed to be an implication that because they don't have like the you know enough Targaryen blood that they can't learn the language, but that like, doesn't make sense because ex- Allison isn't Targaryen. So. Exactly, exactly. I couldn't figure out like what. I feel like there's definitely something that's supposed to be that's being shown to us by this choice, right? I just don't know exactly what it is because <laughs> their father's a filthy commoner, <laughs> but he's not. He's not even a com. Like, no. yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> Uh, yeah. That's what I'm going to change the uh, filthy casual status on Discord to is filthy commoner. Filthy commoner. Yeah. <laughs> it's like like when we talk about Allison, right? She is from a noble house, but she's not Targaryen. Harwin is from a noble house, but he's not Targaryen. But then the Targaryen genes completely demolish the high tower genes, right? Mm-hmm. It's like those kids are nothing but Targaryen. They might as well have been both parents if you look at um. Aegon and Aemon and even uh, Helena. But then Rhaenyra, her Targaryen genes didn't work the same way. Mm -hmm. And uh, my immediate question is, well, why not? So I guess these this is a terrible pun, but these strong, it's not a pun I want to make y'all, but these strong genes, I guess, are, you know... (laughs) <laughs> there was no other way to do the sentence. I didn't. I didn't want it. I didn't want it to come out like that. Oh my just god! I don't wasn't. know why that got me so bad, but that, like, oh, like so I don't like to pun against my will. I like to choose when and where I pun. <laughs> Oof! Damn. Okay. Noted. But. Seriously, though, on this topic of – because this is like – this is the thing. This is the whole thing, right? This is the whole story right here, these kids. Right. And these kids being illegitimate. And then I I just like – is there theories behind why Rhaenyra's children would not come out with their strong Targaryen genes? Is it that – is it Harwin's strong family? Are they – linked to like another family house or I, I don't know, I guess. I don't know. It's I just thought it was purely for the plot. Okay. That's the only reason. I'll just be honest. I think that's okay. all. Okay. Yeah. Um <laughs> I've been waiting for you to film but you're just gonna sit there with that. Yeah. I am gotcha. uh, mm-hmm. like like because well I, I saw um someone there was the, there's that meme of Ned reading about the the, the color is strong yeah like mm-hmm. that's going that's going around a lot and um, I saw someone sharing about um, the different people in the families and what their hair was 
but they were a lot of them were characters I didn't I didn't know, so it didn't like I don't even remember their names. Okay, so it didn't really. I feel like it would have been really super useful information if I just was like a little bit further along in the story, yeah, you know, yeah, or if I had read Fire and Blood, then like I feel like that information would have been super helpful. But unfortunately, a lot of it I was just like. Who are these people? <laughs> Who was that? His color. But why was his hair that color? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. And then like, um, Allison's children are, uh, very, I mean, they're so pale. Mm-hmm. Plus they have the white hair. So they just look all one color. Like they've been mm-hmm. dunked. Um, and they have a real animosity toward each other. These two sets of kids. It's unclear to me. I think that the eldest of Allison's children definitely knows that these boys are illegitimate. I can't tell if the younger one knows or if that's like, because I have no doubt Allison would inform the eldest because he's going to be the one that's in line. But the younger one, I don't know if he would need to know if he would pick it up through just gossip in the core or what. What? Wait, you think Allison has already told her eldest that um, Renera's eldest, who is the oldest one, is Jaceres? Yes. And then, the, then, and the, all right. So it's for Renera. It's the the eldest is Jaceres, and then she has uh, Luke, who's like Lucerus or Lucaris. I don't know how you pronounce it. And then the baby <laughs> Joffrey. Lucaris, am I right? <laughs> 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 <I'm sorry. laughs> and uh and then allison has Aegon, aemon and helena even though i think helena might be like the middle child not the youngest even though i said her name last no she's the girl so that's fine <laughs> as far as people to tell in the story is mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. so you think that allison has already told Aegon that renera's children are illegitimate i think so because she is trying to hype him up as to his situation and the reality of where he like where he stands with everything. Mm -hmm. And that is a very crucial piece of ammunition. I'm going to say for right now, I don't think she's told her child that yet. Okay. And I say that because I think that Allison knows how dangerous it would be for her son to say that in the wrong place. And he doesn't seem like, it doesn't seem like she trusts him yet. To keep his fucking mouth shut? To keep his mouth shut. Like, she doesn't trust that he gets how, like, we have that scene with her towards the end of the episode when she's trying to, like, shake some reality into him. Mm -hmm. And even in that moment where she's clearly angry that he does not get the seriousness of their situation, she still, she never says that, um, that, that Rhaenyra's kid, uh, Anything other than you should be king because you are the king's firstborn mm. heir. So even in that moment, she she presents it like Renera's kid will be king one day, but you're a threat to them because you're the rightful king. She never actually says, you know, or implies that he shouldn't be king because of some other shit. Mm. You know what I mean? Okay. Well. Oh, Viserys and his dedication to this lie that he is telling himself about his daughter. I stand. <laughs> You stand his self delusion. I do. All right, I noted. <laughs> because the other thing I realized on my my second and a half or almost third rewatch is that I am apparently I didn't realize I had chosen sides, but I have clearly chosen Renera's side. Oh yeah, most I people didn't, have right. So. I uh, I said Viserys is like yeah those are my grandchildren say I dare you to say something different <laughs> and I'm like god damn right I fucking dare you to say something different that's basically what he says to Strong when he resigns it's just like why though mm-hmm. why are you resigning Allison What's is like problem? yeah why say it say it she's say trying it. to get him to put his fucking neck on the right block. he looked fucking at her you and put said, yourself at risk bitch Listen, I was so annoyed but uh, anyway we're getting ahead of ourselves I'm sorry I keep interrupting you but. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna so yeah, we got Austin Arminio coming through in the clutch as usual. Uh a bit of a cheat sheet for the new kids. Black hair, Rhaenyra and a black girl with white hair, Damon. Uh white kid with black hair, Rhaenyra, black girl with white hair, Damon. 
um allison's kids aegon first and eldest helena second only daughter aemond third child second son rhaenyra's kids jaceris aka jace luceris luke joffrey newborn and then damon's kids reyna and bela so that's who we're working with so they Damon named Damon and Lena named one of their kids Raina, which I guess could be both after her mother, who's named Rainus, and also Rhaenyra, mm-hmm. and probably eight other Targaryens as well. Indeed. Um, what the fuck I was going to say? Oh, oh, I don't know if it was Austin in additional notes or if it was a comment I saw in the wild or in another group, but someone somewhere on the internet said that in the books Rainus has black hair. Um, do you remember if that's true or not? Do, do you not remember, remember that? No, I'm afraid because not. that it to me is very interesting because if she's a Targaryen or you know half Targaryen with dark hair, and then she marries a Valerian and the hair still comes out white, then you know if I'm if I'm Rhaenyra, I'm like, oh yeah, them jeans are super strong though. It's gonna be fine. <laughs> you know, I can have these kids with Harwin. It'll be fine. My jeans got it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> After the first two failures, though, probably want to start watching it. I'm Listen, just saying. The third one. What does Allison say? The third one is just a mockery. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, all right. Moving moving along. These kids, uh, they're, they kind of play a prank on the middle kid whose name I literally just read and forgot already. Amen. <laughs> Who doesn't have his own dragon. So this is also interesting because we got kids who don't have dragons. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have two of them that we meet in this episode because one of Damon's girls also doesn't have a dragon. And this idea of being a Targaryen born when dragons are a thing, getting an egg that just doesn't hatch mm-hmm. and what that does to you socially, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, is really interesting. It's not something I think I thought about. I just kind of figured everybody, everybody get a dragon. That's what we do. <laughs> right. Like it's so it's Oprah really... with a dragon egg under your seat. <laughs> Listen, the way that they are throwing them around in this episode is a little bit like that. <laughs> And uh, yeah, he, they have like a pig that they bring out after saying that they found a dragon for him. And it's just like really mean spirited. And this is something that Allison um, brings up later. Yeah. When this, she's talking to her son, she's just like, you can't be dogging on your own people. You can't do this. We need to be united. And the, this, this sort of like in, in fighting is just going to bite you in the ass. So knock it off. Yeah. She's like, you can treat your brother like shit in private, but in public, Mm -hmm. you can't, we have to be united as a family. Also, this, this prank is clearly all of these, not all the boys, but the two older boys are clearly in on it. Yes. In my opinion. Yes. Um, and then fucking Aegon is like a little bitch about it. And it's just like, Oh, it was those other kids that made me do it. Even though he's the fucking oldest. Yeah. I don't like him. Yeah, I know he. he I know I just met him. I think he's supposed to suck. It's not this kid's fault that his character sucks. It's also not his fault that he looks like Mike from Stranger Things, which is also wildly he really distracting. Does. Right? It's crazy, right? Yeah, he's David Tennant's kid. Is that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. David Tennant and the. I just found out because of this that apparently he married a woman whose father also played Doctor Who. Oh, Did you right. know that? Yes. Yeah, yeah, we talked about this on the Doctor Who episode, actually, I think. Yeah. So, yeah, I feel like it's the kind of thing you got to talk about if you're doing a Doctor Who podcast. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, yeah, he winds up, like, going down into the dragon pits to uh, take a little bit of a closer look and almost pees his pants after yeah. he blow, blows some fire and gets up and runs away. Yeah, there's somebody down there that um I'm not exactly sure which dragon that's supposed to be. I feel like it's not the one they just met. This feels like someone else. But um I'm not sure if there I if think that's something... supposed to I can't remember if the black dread is still alive because the black dread was uh Viserys's that was, that was Balerion, right? Yeah. And okay. I can't remember how long he lives but he, I, what, that might be him down there 
We've seen them in front of the skull of Balerion a couple times, though, haven't we? Oh, I guess that was the skull. Yeah, 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 you're right. Yeah, so yeah. I don't know who this was down here. It doesn't yeah. really matter. But, but we find out a little bit later on in this episode, which is the other thing I was, like, really salty about, is that Lena, who didn't have a dragon, has a dragon. And it's fucking Vagar, which is, like, the most famous, you know, riderless dragon. Like, so... Like a thing of legend, mm -hmm. the biggest dragon known to still be alive, who's just been out there on her own, like, you know, getting her own groove back without anybody <laughs> riding her. Like, no one knows where she's been. And then Lena pops up and she's fucking riding her. And you're not going to tell me even a little bit about that? Mm. So uh, what do you want to know? I'd like to know how the fuck. That's fair. <laughs> because you know? we do have a little bit of her talking about how she didn't have a dragon until she was yeah, 15 later. Till she but we was just 15. get like that little snap snippet that's, of dialogue and that's, that's all we all, get. All we get. Yeah. All we get. We we were and I and I, and you know what? It's funny because I remember and I thought, oh, for a second when I thought I, I before I knew she was going to die at this in the end of this episode, when she said that thing about I didn't get one until I was fifteen, I thought, Oh, that's really cute because um when we meet her as a little girl, when she's first having her little walkabout with Viserys before he decides to marry Alicent, mm -hmm. and she's very, very curious about Vagar, and she asked, you know, all these questions: Does anybody know where she is? Has anybody seen her? And I was like, Oh, that's really cute. They're bringing that full circle. You know, mm -hmm. this this will be a fun story to hear and watch. <laughs> But then it didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, here's my issue with the time jump. Because you mentioned earlier about people talking about, well, now we're going to get into the good stuff. And, like, what I find kind of surprising is that the good stuff is the good stuff because you're meant to have, like, care about the people that are sort of the most involved and at risk by then. Mm. Mm -hmm. And it seems like the show thinks that that is only Raina or Rhaenyra and Alicent and that everybody else or, or, and Damon, I guess. And like, I'm adding Viserys in there, but only tangentially because obviously that man looks like the crypt keeper at this point. Listen, There's only he, so much he is left to, to he do looks here. So bad. He looks, in this like, episode. he looks like he's mad. He's not dead yet. <laughs> Like, is personally insulted that he has not died yet. <laughs> somebody to needs to, to approach him manager. about cutting off these little strings of hair that he still has going on. It is not a good look. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. He looks like in uh, Indiana Jones when the Nazis' faces start to melt off and their hair begins <laughs> yeah! to fall out. Oh, my God. He does. <laughs> oh. Um, oh, no. <laughs> But I just, I find it, like, kind of weird that we establish everything with with Rhaenyra and Allison, but give Allison so little personality. We jump ahead so much, and then Allison is super aggro, mm -hmm. and we don't get to see that formed. It's just supposed to be, she turned, she, she dressed in green for this wedding. <laughs> and that was her declaration of war. And now mm -hmm. we're going to get a fucking different person. That's not how that works. You can recognize that somebody is not on your side the way that you thought and that you need to be on the defensive more than you thought. And that doesn't necessarily turn you into the kind of person demanding to see the baby immediately after birth. Yep. Yep. So skipping over all that, there's just, you're supposed to sort of take it for granted, but I don't feel like you should take that for granted. Yep. And then the development of her affair with Harwin, I would have been interested to see as well. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to know because like, it seemed as if when she was talking to Lenore that she was saying, we'll do our duty and then we'll do what we want. And it sounded like she was saying, you get me knocked up and we'll have a fucking kid. Yeah. And then I will do what the fuck I feel like. Yeah. And instead it's just, a, a like, very thin did they veneer. ever fuck at all? Yeah, it exactly. looks like they've never fucked. Like they've not fucked at all. Like you're a hundred percent right. I don't see any reason why she doesn't have at least one fucking kid. Mm -hmm. You know that that is uh, trueborn to Laner. Um, 
and and that they wouldn't make that a priority. These two, you know, children that are about to be queen and king consort understand the roles that they have to play. They are not, I don't think, supposed to be stupid either one. That's the thing that I'm struggling with is that I thought she was the type that understood the role she's supposed to play. But when we look back at the attitude that she's had in the episodes leading up to this, she has never seemed to be willing to play the role she's allegedly so focused on taking on. Mm -hmm. And it's sort of weird. Like she demands to be treated as, as the heir and acknowledged in this way. But any of that work, she it like, especially setting up of a marriage, she didn't seem to be willing to acknowledge how much of a requirement that is for what she's about to do. Right. Which is why I took that moment with her and Lan- Laner talking about what their marriage would be. I really thought that was supposed to be telling me something about how she was growing. Right. And, exactly. You know, but I guess maybe she didn't grow. It seems like either she didn't grow or when she didn't get knocked up by Lenore right away, if if they ever did fuck, which I don't think they did, but if they ever did, she was just like, well, you know, we gave it a try. I'm going to go over to his house now. And, and like this, like when you frame it like that, then Allison seems a little bit like i don't want to say she has the right of it because i really just don't but but like this sort of idea of she what she thinks of renera which is basically just that she can do whatever the fuck she wants and never has to deal with any consequences whatsoever Mm -hmm. which granted while might be unfair also ma'am are you familiar with monarchy have you met the targaryens so this This is something, okay, I'm going to just say this, everybody. I am on Allison's side. I was very much, when I read the books, Team Rhaenyra. But Rhaenyra of the show has done nothing for me. And Allison, being as angry as she is, makes such sense because Allison did what she was supposed to do and felt like she had no alternatives and is right. watching this other woman get to just do exactly what she feels like and there's clearly so much like bitterness about that a hundred percent the only my problem with it is that allison's anger is misdirected oh it definitely is right but that but i 100 percent agree on the read i feel like that's the decision the show is making right Mm -hmm. that they are pitting this young woman who just went along with everything because of duty, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. And her allegiance to duty and the and the way that her father raised her um, to never basically say no to anything. And to ne- like when the very first time we meet Allison, right? She's yelling at Renera about not studying and, the, and mm-hmm. how the Septa is going to be, you know, c- cross with her. And, you know, Allison is just little Miss Goody Two Shoes, <laughs> you know, yes. which as a, as a former Goody Two Shoes myself, you know, I recognize that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and have immense sympathy and empathy for that position. And but, it, her oh. children are at risk at this point, you know. So to see a, a, a woman who is just flouting what you think is mm-hmm. required of her and her decision to flout it makes the fact that your children are going to have their lives in danger shortly even more offensive. Yeah. Because they, she just is so brazen about it, but nobody's going to call her out and you have to stand and watch that maybe your children are going to be executed as a result of her bastard kids that she didn't even try. It doesn't seem Mm. to have like uh, the veneer of it's just such a thin pretense and for her children to be at risk this way because of a woman who is just not, barely putting any effort in to yeah. decency as she puts it later respectability mm-hmm. i really get it like being a rule follower and watching other people just not do that and they still get their way that's already hard enough <laughs> but when your entire life and family is on the line due to that person forget it i cannot imagine yeah. I just I, what? I'm trying to get there myself. Uh 
I understand that Allison really is concerned for the safety of her children, but I feel like Renera's children are in a much more vulnerable position than Allison's children are. I feel like I haven't seen anything yet that other than like just sort of just uh everything that's external, like the things mm-hmm. that aren't in their control. But as far as like the behavior of both Allison and Renera and the and people in the immediate court, Viserys, the hand, I don't see any reason why Allison has to fear Renera. Except this sort of well just by yeah, just by existing, we're we're a threat, and I I get that, right? So I and I think the other thing the show is trying to sort of get me to understand, but not doing a great job of it so far, is that I'm supposed to believe that Alice equates Renera's uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Lack of honor, right? Okay. Equate that that lack of honor and the way she behaves, the way she carries herself, the, who she's having her children with, all of that to Allison is evidence that she can't trust Renera. The Renera is without honor, so her kids will never be safe, mm-hmm, right? Mm-hmm. But I haven't seen Renera do or say anything that makes me think that Allison's children would be in any danger. Gotcha. But I see Allison being very, very aggressive. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So to me, as I'm watching, I'm like, well, bitch, you're going to make her fucking hate your kids. You keep trying her like this. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I also like you're saying that you feel like Rhaenyra's kids are in more danger. And while I think that's like hypothetically true, and, and this is no fault of the children's, but she brought children into the world knowing that the way the way she was choosing to bring them into the world was putting them at risk. Yeah. Also, Allison why is was she again still just in- doing her job that she was expected to do, which is have kids with the king. And she did her but then this this other girl who, yeah, her kids are but she like chose to 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 do this the way she did. She could have done it a different way and not wound up here. I don't even know why she's in King's Landing. That's really like she winds up bailing to go to Dragonstone. It should have been like when I don't she know said, why we're still here. I'm like, same. I was like, me either. She, yep. I, we should have been left. Yes, you should have been left. Yeah. Why? And 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 I and this is the thing too. Like Lenore has to like Lanner has to come right out and say it because I didn't get it. Like the show didn't make it make me understand why she's still here until he said, "Well, you always said if you left, then your father would have more of her poison in his ear." And I was like. Oh, so she's been here because she didn't want to just leave her father alone with Allison, Mm -hmm. you know, poison. Oh, okay. But like, until that was said. See, this is what I was saying in earlier episodes. There are so many things that they just say. That's not the way a show should go. It's called a show. (laughs) I am supposed to be getting like the... Oh, guess what color they fly when they're going to war? Everybody's already in the middle of gasping. She's halfway down the aisle. And you're telling me now that that's what's, <laughs> what's supposed to be making a big impression on me? Like, it just, I don't know. There's, there's, there are so, this is not an easy task taking on something that is like a history and deciding to fully flesh it out. Mm-hmm. But I really feel like, I'm trying to think of the way to say this. I really feel like they're doing something similar to um, the original creators in Game of Thrones where they got focused on these like big moments like the Red Wedding Mm -hmm. and thought about this drama surrounding these moments and how that was what the books were about. And they lost the thread of like the characters being smart compelling people that you care about so that by the time we get to the end everything is all over the place and i feel like that's what they're kind of doing here they're focusing on these big moments and they're not putting the work in between the moments to get them to hang together Mm -hmm. and the time jump I was willing to go with because I didn't realize how big a jump it was going to wind up being and how much they were just going to skip. Now that I see this, 
it feels so unwieldy. And you could have had a time jump where it's five years and we're seeing Rhaenyra's decision to have Harwin as a lover and ha- bear his kid and why she would ever make a choice to do this. And again, mm-hmm. th- it's canon that she did this. I'm not trying to argue about the choice itself. I'm trying to argue about a character that you and I both thought was coming to the conclusion. It's time to get serious and do my job now. Apparently fucking not. Yeah. And we don't really get any good background on why she is determined to stay in King's Landing to protect her father from Allison, but she's not going to do like the bare minimum to keep people on her side in Mm -hmm. terms of, you know, like being respectable. And can I just say real quick, that well while we're talking about Harwin specifically that when they shared the screen together in this episode Mm -hmm. there was like nothing there was no chemistry at all there was no chemistry Mm -hmm. like I'm looking at them on the screen like so this is this is who you risked it all for Mm -hmm. not that he's not fine like you know it's it's not about that it's not that yeah but the energy between them the chemistry was not there it didn't feel like yeah this what we have was worth every risk that I took. Nope. You know, she if feels she like was... his wingman. There was something very much about the like relationship between the two of them that felt like bros. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Did not, did yeah. not work. Yeah. And it just definitely didn't, uh, didn't make me go, Oh, I see why y'all just was like, fuck what everybody got to say. Mm-hmm. What we have is real. And you know, like his, his emotional, outbursts later on i guess we need to move along we really in the do. yard with the boys felt more real than any moment he shared with renero on screen yeah <laughs> yeah so let's uh we have this little moment with um allison and she's sitting with helena who's playing with bugs and a sort of a vibe here of like this little girl one not liking to be touched by her mother she's clearly kind of mm-hmm. uh withdrawn mm-hmm. um and there's almost a sense of like her maybe being psychic or something that they're trying to set up i feel like yeah there's definitely a this child is special kind of energy happening mm-hmm. um there was uh there's this distance between her and allison and um when austin mentioned in one of his notes that uh this is the child that she's always like carrying while she, while she's crying mm-hmm. in the earlier episodes um yeah i don't know but there's definitely something going on with this little girl that i feel like we're supposed to be keeping an eye out on her right um um so her like son comes in all upset because they gave him a pig he's like covered in dirt cuz he like freaked out and ran away And then the next thing we know, she is going to Viserys and talking about how these kids are savages. (laughs) Uh, They are. It's not surprising. And he says, are you sure it wasn't Aegon who put them up to it? And she doesn't Mm -hmm. really answer him. But I thought it was like, you know, he's wrong about a lot. But in that moment. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's funny. He uh, seems to have. This is also the same bit where they have the conversation. He tells a story about the horse, right? Is it? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm behind you or not. When my little I'm having paint the screen has just kind of been playing in the background, so I'm not sure if I jumped ahead or not. Mm-hmm. I think it but, is. Yeah. But uh, they end up having this conversation because she's still trying to get him to admit it. Yeah. You know, it, and you can see the frustration because she's being gaslit. Mm-hmm. She's she's being gaslit by by her husband, by the entire court, by everybody. You know. Uh, it is a frustrating position for her to be in, especially when she knows that she's right. Yeah. And and that she's right about something that is hugely important. <laughs> uh, and it's just really unfortunate that the only people she has a turn to are fucking Christian Cole and Lara's fucking strong, Ugh. who are both trash. Um, yeah, so Sir Kristen, let's talk about this. Took me out the whole episode, y'all. Can't lie. This, I was... I don't... Okay, so... Ryan Reisman has made the argument a few times I've seen about how cops will just murder and get away with it and keep working and it's nothing. And I would argue that 
this does not compare to that situation. <laughs> that is a like I get the comparison you're trying to make there, but it feels utterly irrelevant in the face of what's actually happened here and the way that again monarchy works and the house valerian and their position works mm-hmm. and the offense that he gave by doing mm-hmm. this like all Am of that I supposed to believe to that this dude is going to at least get in trouble of it. We never Corliss see nothing. Valerian is Sir Petty McPettison. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He is a known grudge holder. Yep. And we haven't seen him this episode, so I'm I can't he maybe he is still salty, but I feel like there is no what concessions were made to satisfy Corliss so that Chris, Sir Christian Cole is not only still alive, but still in a King's Guard and a sworn protector to the fucking queen. Yeah. What did he what did y'all give him? This is the thing, is like a lot of people are saying, well, that was his son's lover and he didn't want his son to be gay, so he wouldn't care. No. There Mm-mm. is still face to be yep. saved yep. in a situation like this. Mm-hmm. You don't have to acknowledge the personal relationship. It is the fact that this was supposed to be your son's sworn guard mm-hmm. that got murdered at the wedding feast with apparently no provocation. And if there was yep. provocation that was argued, why don't we see it? Why don't we yep. ever have any moment? And we have already talked at length about when it happens and how we see all of these like mm-hmm. City Watch and other King's Guard coming down. We never see them touch him, bring him. He like wanders out mm-hmm. into the fucking Godswood by himself. And then boom we jump ahead and he is still working here and he is still like and this this lends itself to my question about exactly what a queen can do Mm -hmm. right what she can and how how far she can how far her power extends really because the only thing i can think of is that she suddenly unilaterally was like he is under my protection right and that is that is a huge in my opinion a huge stretch right but say that's what happens. Mm-hmm. That feels like a real hand wave. And she's the queen, but she's not she doesn't have all the power. And I don't I don't know. Like I am I supposed to just imagine a whole scenario where she battles with Viserys and puts her foot down and then because he's just so weak, he ends up letting her have her way. Mm. Is that what I'm supposed to believe has happened? Because that doesn't do anything for the political nightmare that Christian killing Joffrey would be. Right. You know? Yep. And it's just such a weird thing to have done to set the, the, to change the way Joffrey's death happens so that it winds up being this problematic. Like there's a reason it was an accident in the original text Mm -hmm. and it happened at a tourney where that sort of accident can happen and is excusable and understandable having it go the way it did for the sheer drama of it and then doing nothing to justify any of what happens after i don't understand this choice at all it's like they just didn't think ahead yeah and then what they decide to do with him i when i watched the previous episode and i i don't really like live tweet shows or anything but when i watched the previous episode i had like commented a couple times while i was watching it and i jokingly said after he killed joffrey that oh i guess he's going to be allison's ally now and then after i wrote that i thought to myself well that's so fucking dumb how is he going <laughs> to like he's not going to live to be anybody's fucking ally and then look where we are. Ta-da. And they decide to to they decide to have him murder Joffrey in that fashion. Bring him back ten years later, who also, by the way, has not aged a fucking day. It's weird that they just have the same exact actor for him. Like get they, they could have did something with his hair. Yeah. I think they cuttered, but I think that's, they could, yeah. They could have did more than that. They could have, like, I don't know, threw some gray in there. Gray, yeah. A, a beard, a little paunch, something. He's this, it looks like it's the next fucking day. Mm-hmm. It does. But anyway, they bring him back so he can be what? This disgusting, incel-adjacent fucking <sighs> bully of children? Yep. That's what we needed to bring back? Mm-hmm. Gross. Gross, gross, gross. gross. Yep. <laughs> Which is basically, that's like the entire scene that we're getting to is the 
beat on him, don't let him get up. And eventually Harwin having to step in and be like, is this what you teach? Cruelty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he just decides to really be like, huh, it's wild that you're this invested in their training. It's almost like uh, they're related to you somehow in this way that's just so... It he is just being so obvious again and, in a way that would really usually get you in some big trouble for talking like this. And exactly. And I'm and I have a complaint about this scene and I have the same complaint with Laris because it's like the show forgot in this moment that ten years have gone by. Right? Okay. How? So he's talking to Harwin like you haven't been raising or I'm not. These kids haven't been around for ten years. Oh God! Christian you. is talking to Harwin like he's just now seeing Harwin react to these children this way. Gotcha. Like, oh, this is so strange. As opposed to, I've been in the yard for ten years watching you act this way for ten years. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like, oh, I just woke up today, and it's really curious how affectionate and, and protective you are of these stranger boys. You know, like stranger boys. <laughs> the sequel it's, to stranger thing it's just a weird you know like you would have this is a relationship that you have been watching for 10 years but you just go from zero to 60 today on on year 10 day one yep and it's the same exact thing that happens with laris later on in the episode we see allison come back to her quarters after a very long day of being disbelieved and disrespected at every turn to settle into what is apparent a, a standing date that I have with Laris where we talk about the day's fuckery, mm -hmm. right? And the next thing you know, this man has murdered his family. <laughs> and you are fucking shocked. Bitch, who have you been having dinner with for 10 years? Or is he like that much of a mastermind that you, and you're so dumb that you didn't know you were being played? Like if she's if she's about that life, right? She's protecting her children and she's ready to make these moves, then let her make these moves. Mm -hmm. Don't don't have her be unintentionally implicated in these murders that she didn't explicitly ask for. And, Oop, now I'm in a trap. Let her be like, you know what? Yeah, fuck them. Burn them up. Because yep. that works for me. That that you know what this plan you have and get my father back? I like this plan because it's going to serve me. Mm -hmm. So yeah, let's, let's do, and, but we don't even fucking get that. Nope. Yeah. It's, it's a weird combination of trying to make her more of the villain after not giving her much to do earlier and then pulling back and not letting it completely loose. Mm -hmm. And I'm not entirely like, are they again, just like, wait for it she'll be murdering left and right by the end of the season <laughs> like is that what they're doing because i'm just she'll tired be, of it feeling like they're trying to fucking play the long game with everything the game right burned. now is no good guys <laughs> how about the now game i really i i'm more interested in that but like it's just the decision to have this guy to be over here with his fucking mustache twirling right it i don't know what he is for other than to be like well we needed some kind of little finger in this mix so i guess you know because i, I don't really see the as far as i recall from the original text i don't recall him having anything to do with any of this this really i think that this is like all invented for the show and interesting and correct me if i'm wrong guys i freely admit that i don't remember well enough to say but i feel like they are they keep trying to like put drama in places where drama easily already existed you're just making it about something it wasn't and i don't know why i don't know why you're like changing it up and, and a, twisting it so that it winds up later not making sense why you did it this way. I would be really curious, Austin, uh, if you uh, feel so inclined to answer these, the questions about whether and how this goes in the books with Laris, especially in killing of Harwin and um, his father. Because what it does is it, it takes a character, Laris, who I am to understand is a bit of an afterthought because he is physically uh, injured, right? Mm -hmm. He's got this, this disability. 
that that sort of knocks him out of the running of being taken seriously in his family. And then he's got this older brother who is like the height of physical fitness. You know, he's commander of the city watch. He's big, he's strong, you know, he's he's all the things. He's the firstborn son, he's gonna see the hair in hell. So I get that I can fill in the blanks a little bit with Laris and be like, all right, I am I am to understand that he is willing to do these horrible things to gain access to the benefits and privileges of his station that he didn't have access to Mm -hmm. because his father and his brother were kind of in the way. But I don't really know any of that from the show. Yeah. And I didn't know there was so much animosity that he was willing to burn up his his father and his brother. Mm-hmm. Um, you know that that is quite a leap. <laughs> yes, it is. And and if we saw him in his own scenes being treated a certain way, being yeah, denied give me, certain give, things. Give me one scene where anybody is rude, like well, not anybody. His father and his brother specifically, right, are just straight up shitty to him. So then I can start to be like, okay, there's some shit festering there. Mm-hmm. Have a scene with him and Allison, even. You know, the, he says one thing about his, the one bad thing he says about his father in this episode is that his morality or whatever is like an albatross around his neck or some shit, you know, his morals like get in the way that that doesn't that that and then you're, that and then is you're just setting such, them on fire. <laughs> such trite bad guy dialogue. Oh, these people and their honor and their honesty. <laughs> They don't get anything done. It you is know, only I who care not for such things that can accomplish and, anything. Uh, fucking and, and, really? Are we doing and, this? And so then when he, when, when that happens and as a viewer, I'm like, well, that fucking escalated. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. I thought, well, maybe the show was telling me something I missed, but then Allison is a fucking surprise. <laughs> <I am>. So. <laughs> So clearly, this is very surprising behavior, and I hadn't missed anything. Uh, there is. This is how I felt about a lot, a lot of what's been going on. It's like, did I miss it? <laughs> nope, I sure didn't. It's just not there. But like I said, I didn't have as many problems with this in general because I just decided to like just let, let, it, let slide it go right over my yeah. brain like Jello. <laughs> I don't need to, you know, there, you know it, I just, after the first five episodes, I'm like, all right, they're clearly really not going to give a shit about whether a lot of this works. So I, I guess I won't either. I know what I did wrong too and why I had such a hard time with this episode. Uh, and I want to be careful because this is a free episode, but I was not a hundred percent sober. <laughs> But I wasn't drunk. <laughs> I hadn't been drinking. Okay. <laughs> but I wasn't sober. <laughs> and I think maybe I can't I can't do that with this show. <laughs> I am surprised that that's the – because I feel like that f- would make it better, no? You would think. But I was I, – I, my, my whole time, I was I was not here for any of it. <laughs> so I don't know if the episode was just that bad or maybe I just can't, like, smoke before I watch. <laughs> I don't like, yeah, that surprises me because I would think that would do the opposite and just yeah. make you go, yeah, all right, that works. I was in everything. My brain was just like, ah, what is this? What are they doing now? No, that is not how that would go. <laughs> it is really remarkable the about face that's happened, though. I will say <laughs> that. Like, I'm, I, I don't want to say that I feel validated because – it doesn't really change how you felt about the previous episodes, which I was already Mm-mm. feeling this way about. You haven't like changed your mind on those, but Mm-mm. it's interesting to see that there came a point where you drew the line also. <laughs> and we're like, uh-uh, all right, we've officially gone too far. <laughs> um, so uh, I feel like we've really talked about it. Like I'm about to go scene by scene. There's that fucking moment where she decides that she's going to go talk to her son and he's in the middle of jerking oh off God. at the window, like fucking At the Roman. same window that fucking Tommen took a header out of. Oh, I guess it is, huh? <laughs> I saw a couple of like side by sides. It, 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 yeah, it's the same window. <laughs> he is jerking off to the son because that tells us a lot about him, I guess. 
Is that what it is? Like, what is, I don't what know. Is, do you remember He's, Roman in succession jerking off, standing over everything at the window? Oh, my God. That's what I was getting from this. You're right. I forgot about that, but you're right. But you know what? Also kind of saying something about the person. Though, yeah. Oh, definitely. <laughs> I wonder, do the guards see him? Like, they have to see him and just be like, Who is standing underneath that window? Oh, my God. You know, like, what if that's somebody's post? Some poor maid with her legs open going, maybe I'll get knocked up and I can <laughs> cash in on this. <laughs> Let's see. The kid has white hair. We all know what that means, apparently. Uh, yeah, this, this, uh, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I shouldn't have looked up at the screen. <laughs> Cause now I'm at the window, but it was right after uh, Allison and Cole and he calls her. Cause her a relentless. spoiled cunt. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was that really necessary? I mean, <laughs> none of what Kristen Cole is doing is necessary. <laughs> he, in the, in the version of it where she tried to seduce him and he refuses her, him being a little disgusted at her morality makes more sense as being somebody who's like, no, what? Mm-hmm. And like shakes her off and walks away. But him having slept with her and now trying to, like, hold this high ground feels very different. After you have asked her to come run away Mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. assuage your guilt and assuage your your feelings at your lapse of morals. Mm -hmm. Even if she was responsible, you know, to to a degree, she's still a child, but, well, younger, not a child, but but she was in a position of of authority over him. Mm -hmm. Uh. I think it's very interesting that there's a version where he says no to her despite her power over him. And I think that is actually a much more interesting story to tell. Agreed. But he does say yes. He does end up fucking her. He does then propose to her and ask her to run away. And not because he loves her either, Mm -mm. but wants her to run away so that he can like you know, reverse engineer his fuck up. <laughs> so, and then to have him 10 years later still, and I, I guess again, this is the end again, I'm supposed to fill in the blanks here. So he's watched her for 10 years and this resentment is building as, as Renera continues to just sort of flaunt every, every rule of decency, you know, flout, flout, it's flout, flout the every, decency and flout, flaunt that she's flouting them. Oh, flaunt that she's flouting. I mean, them. <laughs> it's good though. It well, she's a flouter. <laughs> but so I guess we're supposed to believe that this resentment has been building, you mm-hmm. know, and it just comes out in this moment, and it, it, you know, and that's why it's so harsh. But again, it's harsh because we haven't seen any of the building. Yep, yep. <laughs> so it just lands really hard. <laughs> Because like I said, guys, I'm kind of on Allison's team, even though, you know, she's a bitch, but they're kind of both being a bitch, just in really, really different ways. And I am, I tend to be more of a rule follower. So I'm going to have sympathy for the person who's following the rules and getting put in a pretty bad position, despite doing what they're supposed to do. Because anytime that somebody can just do what they want, because they're, they have power that's just inherent, mm-hmm. I'm never going to be a fan of that. I just Mm. don't, I'm, you know, the only thing that like very slightly gets me pulled over to her side is that Rhaenyra is doing shit that a man could get away with. Mm -hmm. And even then a man isn't going to put his bastards in line for the throne. He's going to be knocking up like whores and that will be on his own time, but also siring true born children. And because she's a woman, she doesn't really have the luxury of doing both things. Well, I, it is funny because, you know, obviously there's been a lot of comparisons to Cersei, right? Mm-hmm. And how Cersei had her children who were not, you know, true born heirs of the king mm-hmm. and had them in line in succession. And, you know, Joffrey was going to be king and then Tommen. Uh, so that there is, uh, we later see in this universe a, a woman who is able to pull this off, mm-hmm. right? Um in a way that Renera is having, I don't think she's going to be successful. with. Like I said earlier in the recording of this show, I'm pretty sure I read or heard somewhere at some point that, you know, there was never a Targaryen queen. So I'm pretty sure that Renera, you know, never ends up actually sitting. But, so, which means her kids probably end up losing as well. 
But Cersei pulled it off. Yeah, I guess she um, did. I don't think of it as being successful, but I guess it was. I mean, yeah, I mean, the kids all died. That sucked. <laughs> but, but, but as far as, like, yeah, they were seated, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, so, uh, I'm sorry I lost track because I got distracted by thinking about Game of Thrones. <laughs> but, yeah, when, when you talk about how, like, men, you know, will have their, their bastards and mm-hmm. then have their true-born children because they're doing both their duty and then having their fun on their own time. Uh, and then, yeah, Cersei was my example of somebody who actually – managed to to do both as a woman you know right. have her bastards and have them sit on the throne but that's 170 years from now and also i know that there are going to be people who are trying to talk to me about the uh one dude who legitimized all his bastard children and that led to the whole black fire thing and i know but that's not the same either so just i know about it don't okay. don't bother all right, yeah, I don't know what those words are. Yeah, mean, that's so a I'm whole other gonna... thing. <laughs> we, we've we touched on it before. I've talked to you about it, but it's, like, not really important at the moment, so. Okay. Um, we should probably talk at some point about Damon. I was about to and say. That, and that side of the story. Yeah. yeah. So, Damon has wound up marrying Lena and got her knocked up twice. Mm-hmm. Well, she got a set of twins. Right, that's the girls it. are yeah, twins, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then that. she's pre- and she's pregnant now, and they are in Pentos. Mm-hmm. I think so. And they are living a very nice life, but they are living it kind of on somebody else's dime. Yes, you know, it's very reminiscent of early Daenerys and Viserys. You know, mm-hmm. being sort of exiled across, you know, the narrow sea or whatever. So. This is another situation where I got a lot of backstory from the internet. Okay. And it was, oh, and you know what else I did for this episode? Because I didn't like it so much. I don't, I, I watched the recap, which I don't usually do. Oh, the, okay. You know, the after show recap. Mm-hmm. Cause I just was like, there's a bunch of shit that I'm not getting. Mm-hmm. So what were you, what was I supposed to get? And the recap episode specifically about Damon and Lena was so much more that I was like, well, that should have been in the show and not part of the recap. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. You want to fill so, in? One of the producers, I forget, it might've been Sapachik or however you say his name or somebody else who made a showrunner. Somebody was like, we're watching a marriage disintegrate. <laughs> and I said, word. Are we? It looked were like we? we were having a fight. I thought, yeah, like I we were watching a whole marriage fall apart. Like that's what they like. Like that is what they said. That's what we were watching. Did you get that? Did you know that giving birth is like being on a battlefield? Oh my god! For Sean? <laughs> Did you know that they were saying something about Roe v. Wade? With that, I don't know if you were aware, but they were making a big uh, statement. We didn't talk about the opening of this episode too, and the 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 birth that we don't see but we hear. Mm-hmm. We also have uh, a, a very different act of birth with Lena. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. The, it's just very, it's interesting to see the way when I say act of birth, I mean like literally the way the actresses were portraying birth um, and the way they each decided to do it was really different. And I always mm-hmm. find that sort of fascinating. <laughs> like were they directed to do it differently or were they just sort of interpreting it differently? And they were, the director was like, yeah, go with that interesting but yeah but um yeah hmm. so she yeah, she doesn't want to be a guest anymore yeah. yeah she's homesick she wants to go home she wants to take her children home she also makes a, a bit about how she wants her children to have like access to their birthright you know and she wants to have this new child at home where she was born so it feels very much like just i she flat out says she misses her brother. Mm-hmm. It just feels like she wants to go home. It doesn't feel like she wants out of this horrible marriage. Right. Agreed. It feels like the two of them are just in disagreement about the next step to take together. Yeah. There's no sense yeah. for me of like, I'm about to fucking bail on her or <laughs> bail on. <laughs> um, 
but yeah, I she's like talking about wanting to have give birth on Driftmark. I want my daughters mm-hmm. to be raised in their homeland. Yep. And also calling Damon out a little bit about this life that they have here that uh, she refers to them as like being mummers. But there's a well, we do get to see them riding dragons a little bit. Mm-hmm. And it looks like, you know, it looks awesome. She's riding Vagar. That's like dope. Vagar is so huge. Compared it's, to his. Oh, oh my, my it was fucking all that highlight of the episode <laughs> that was like really really dope to see it was like i i was like oh shit that's a dragon like for real that's a dragon. <laughs> but she but they are performing for these people on the ground like so they can ooh and ah the dragon right and she is like over and over this is beneath us you know this is this is not how we're supposed to live mm-hmm. this is not how you know we are the blood of old valeria and all that jazz um and but again it wasn't ever a feeling of like oh they hate each other and he can't wait to be out of this marriage and you know the 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 closest is when she says something like i know i might not be who you wanted as their wife Mm. or something and he ends up being like starting to say you know you know it's not that and she says you know you don't don't bother you know Save I know it. I made made peace. I made peace with with the reality of that, but that's it. That's it. That's it. So, I feel like that's that pretty much. I mean, well, she goes into she's <laughs> well. You know, no, I meant with that like the the setup because then we can oh, talk right, about yeah right, what right. actually happens. Um, it's interesting too because it's almost like Damon's being given the same choice that Viserys had. Because the uh, maester is like, we could cut her open and try and oh, take yeah. the baby out. Absolutely. Same exact same exact choice. And she decides that she wants to be in control of her own death. And in the book, she attempts to go down and ride her dragon one last time. And she doesn't make it down the stairs. She dies, like, on the way. Um, uh. They decided to have it be a little bit more dramatic and have her actually make it out there. And she's not going to try and ride the dragon one last time. She's going to explicitly to commit suicide instead of it being like, I'm trying to do one last cool thing before my inevitable death. She's like, I'm just going to have my inevitable death be much more dope than it would otherwise have been, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, the uh, the recap for this bit is interesting because they don't give it any additional context except that – they don't reference the book at all, obviously. They talk about Emma's death versus the way Lena dies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, someone says, we just didn't think Lena would go out like that. I mean, that's not up to her. That's kind of the point. Isn't it? That's what they said. <laughs> like the whole point, em- Emma wouldn't have gone out like that either <laughs> if she didn't have a husband who made the decision that he did. <laughs> so acting like, oh, she wouldn't have gone out like that feels like they're talking shit about Emma and her decisions, which that was not her decision. She was mm. victimized. <laughs> so that's a real weird thing to say, kiddos. And then they have I don't Damon. Feel like they being, understand what anything means. <laughs> they have Damon being asked, right? But we don't get a clear answer, right? I I don't think Damon answers the question. No, it's like it cuts right from him watching her and sort of like contemplating to her mm-hmm. leaving and somehow getting outside ahead of him so that he Way follows ahead. her out and is just like, oh my God. And I'm like, are you telling me that this waddling woman who's like mm-hmm. bleeding and in pain outpaced mm-hmm. you? Like, what am I supposed to think happened here? Yeah. And it's she's so out. She's weird. And she's out there for a bit because she has to call Vagar like three or four mm-hmm, times mm-hmm. before, uh, before she finally obliges. So not only do they low key let Damon off the hook in the scene. Yep. Why we don't we know don't what have... he would have picked. Exactly. Then we have this. And again, like uh, I am really disappointed that this death scene was clearly supposed to be very, very emotional. And I didn't get to experience what I think the full emotion should could have been. Because they just opted to not tell me a lot of 
the story. Mm-hmm. Um, I am not like I was bummed out that she died in the episode without me getting a lot of her story. I don't. Um, I'm not. Uh, I. I'm trying to think. How I want to say this. Because I don't want to imply that other people are wrong for feeling it. Like, I was really like, oh, she's dead already? Well, fuck. Yeah. But I am not upset that she died. I'm upset that she died without me getting anything. You know what I mm-hmm. mean? <laughs> yep. Um. So, and then uh, there's a moment with her, because uh, the thing that's happening to, they're having this dinner with, like, the... the Fancy people of Pentos. <laughs> Indeed, yes. The money, the money class. Mm-hmm. And they are offering them and uh Dana uh Damon and Lena this opportunity to basically live as lords here with their dragons and their children, and we will take care of all of your needs and people will pay you tribute. And we just would like you to help protect us because shit's popping off over at the Stepstones again, right? Right. And then there's a moment with Lena and one of the girls, and I wish I knew which one it was. One of the girls has a dragon and one doesn't, and it's the one who doesn't. And this is when we find out that Lena didn't get Vagar until she was 15. Mm-hmm. Um, and the daughter says something like, you know, basically the daemon just ignores her. Yeah. Which we don't see. We don't see. We don't <laughs> We just see. get told. Yeah, but I'm so I guess I'm supposed to think that because this one girl doesn't have a dragon that that constitutes like a little bit of a failure I don't on know. her part. Yeah, something that like so Damon doesn't know how to connect to her or is unable to connect to her or has made a judgment of her worthiness because she doesn't have a dragon. I'm not sure mm-hmm. which it is, mm-hmm, you know. Mm-hmm. Is she less than because she doesn't have a dragon or does he just not know how to relate to her? Uh because there's also a scene, if I'm not mistaken, where he's teaching them Valerian, I think. Like, he's tutoring them both. It's a real quick scene. Oh, yeah. Because that's sort of what she walks in on, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <sighs> Girl, I don't know. So, I don't know either. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I'll tell you what, though. Uh, a friend on Facebook has been finding, like, like stills from the show. Okay. And I don't know where they're coming from. I don't know if they are scenes that have been cut. They're they're presented as scenes that have been cut, but I don't know. Maybe they were filmed because they're going to be like part of a flashback later. I don't really know. Okay, but there, you know how this episode has Damon on the roof and the girls are like sitting kind of apart from him mm-hmm, after mm-hmm. she dies. Yeah, there's a shot. I wish I could find it and send it to you. Where it's Damon on that same that same location, but he had he's hugging both of the girls. Oh, I saw that too. Did you see and that? Somebody said that was like a cut scene. Yeah, why? Mm. Why would you not put why? I do not know. I do not know. I don't like again, I don't understand I are they I don't understand what they're trying to do with him because they're not doing it. So they cut that for a reason to make him seem like he cares less about his children, I, I suppose. I guess, I guess. And well, uh, I don't know. know why we need to believe that about him. Or what that's supposed to signify. Right? Because cause he can be an asshole and still love his children. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Like, he doesn't have to be a cartoon character. Exactly. You know? He could have had a 10-year marriage to this woman and been in love with her and loved these children, but also be feeling restless and bored, you know? Mm-hmm. Those two things can, can exist at the same time. I don't... I, mm. <laughs> So uh, this is going to be a, a pretty negative one. I better warn everybody. <laughs> um, so I don't even think I went all the way through my my list. <laughs> the, so we, I should mention too, this whole thing with like, uh, what is his name, Laris? Laris, Laris. He like goes like, into the like prison. it's Varys with an L. <laughs> yeah, he goes into the prison and gets a couple yes. of like prisoners gets- and cuts their tongues out in exchange for them being like assassins. Because I guess none of them can write, right? Is that the implication that they're also illiterate because, you know, cutting the tongue out is so that they can't tell stories, but can they also not just write what the fuck they did? I who guess they, did it for? they can't. Yeah. I, I guess uh-huh. I guess the assumption is in a world like this, learning, knowing how to read and write is a very privileged thing and odds are your people – and your, you know, your dregs aren't going to know how. Right. It's, um, I, I just find it sort of strange that they spend more 
time on these Mm -hmm. guys getting their tongues cut out for this job Mm -hmm. than they do on like any of the characters that were (laughs) supposed to give a shit about dying you know i don't know is it the choices they're making are truly beyond me at this point yeah also the 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 whole catalyst for this murder is supposed to be allison's frustration at how alone she is at court and how much she wishes her father was still the hand Mm -hmm. because if he were here then he would force the king to see what's right in front of him which uh, no he would not he would be fired for that shit like has has happened already that one time i don't know if you remember (laughs) i love when laris tells allison that you know your father couldn't be anymore because the whole thing is uh, Lionel Strong is has been is just he's been compromised. These the Renaires had these babies with his son. The the rumors are out. Her, his Harvin has lost his shit in the yard. Has exposed everybody. You know this this sort of, as you kept calling it the sort of veneer, this thin veneer, this thin little veil of if we just never acknowledge it even a little bit, it cannot harm us, mm-hmm. right? And then Harwin is goaded into overreacting and beating the shit out of Kristen in public, which seems to carry a much higher price than Kristen actually beating someone to death Mm. at the engagement party. How about that? But what can you do? Mm -hmm. (laughs) I guess Kristen is now a sworn shield to the queen. And so that means you can't beat him in public. But Joffrey was the sword sworn shield to the king consort and that was okay i just want to make sure i haven't missed anything just checking okay <laughs> <laughs> so uh so now uh lionel is just in a bad position he tries to resign his post viserys is not hearing it so then allison is just like you know has had it right she mentions that if her father were back in town he would at least be partial to her. She would have somebody on her side. And this is supposed to be what triggers Laris into deciding that it is now time to murder his father. (laughs) Okay. Uh, It's like, I, 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 I know that it's bad, but when you just like break it down like that, and you're like, okay, so here's the thing that makes him murder his own family. And yeah. So she's like, yeah. I wish there was somebody on my side. Right, right. But but then after the deed is done, she's just like, oh, what? I never, I never said such a thing. I never asked you to do anything like that for me. I cannot tell you how much I would have preferred if she had just been part of this. I agree. Just genuinely like oh, well, that's not what I asked for, but I guess it sort of gets me where I wanted to go. Give me something. Yeah. Other than this fucking wide-eyed, how could you ever think I would want you to do such a thing? She raised a shaking hand to her trembling (laughs) lips, staring aghast at his. Right. And then, like, that's not insult enough. I have to watch this who-faced asshole pluck a flower and sniff it. Oh, my God. And then talk about how now maybe she owes him a favor. If you don't get the fuck out of my face. Ugh. I don't understand how she owes, like, how can he make her cash in on this? What is he going to say she sent him? Like, he doesn't have anything on her is my point. Not really. He, Not he's really. acting like he has a a plot and there's like a setup that makes it look like she was involved and he can play that card. There is nothing to indicate that she was involved in any of it anywhere along the way that he can point to. Doesn't and I don't know like if it. he's just saying, well, if I just say it, then the, the, the rumor of it will be enough. But honestly, but these anything... guys were people that she already had a problem with. So the rumor that she might be involved, I would assume, is going to be there anyway. And I don't know how he does any of that without implicating himself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, like, the leverage you have is not as practical as you seem to think it is. Yeah. Um, and her, maybe... her fear and sort of reaction of, like... I've been had. I don't get because it doesn't feel like you have been had. It feels like he's yeah. trying to make you think you've been and had. And that's where, and now we're circling right back to, is she supposed to be dumb? Mm-hmm. Because I don't know. 
I feel like if he, at most, he has like an emotional hold on her because she knows in her heart that she wished not that they were murdered or dead, but she wanted her father back. And she's such a righteous person that she, that her guilt might make her feel more implicated than she actually is. And he can exploit that, but that's all just based on her own view of what happened. Mm -hmm. Not, 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 in anything that someone else from the outside is going to come in and accuse her of. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah. And also just like salt in my very open wounds. Fucking now out of high tower is going to come back, isn't he? I mean, and like, I'm, I don't want, I don't want, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want to, I don't want to see that. So who it's would fan- you pick? I don't know, girl. I don't know. But no one Viserys the dumbass. He's absolutely going to like, like if she goes to him, and it's like, we should ask my father to come back. I want to say Viserys says no, because he's still so salty. Not even just so salty, but the, the Viserys in this episode is so emotionally aligned with the lie of who Venera's children are. Mm. That I feel like he would resent bringing in anyone who would cast aspersions. And Otto has a history. But if we think about the fact that Renera has left, if that is going to leave Viserys open to pressure from Alicent, you know, mm. then maybe Otto does. Oh, also, why are they both on a small council? Why is why is Alicent sitting on a small council? Is that also like I have a lot of questions about being queen. What is she doing there? Why are you at the small council meeting? I was also kind of wondering about how this works because like Rhaenyra is obviously in training, you know, if she's going to be heir, Alicent being here doesn't feel like something that would normally be. Not only was she there, but she's like running the meeting. And I guess like maybe it's because Viserys is like so, so ill that she's just getting away with being everywhere with him because he's in such bad health. But that also implies like, to me says you should be sitting quietly. Hmm. And she is half, like, she's low-key trying to, like, running this fucking meeting. I just, oh. And then Renera's offer at the small council meeting, too, where she offers to, like, wed her boys, <laughs> you know. Yep. That was really funny. Her she Alice's really face. thinks that she has come up with the perfect solution. She really thinks, like, oh, I've got it. This will set it all right, and we won't have to be feuding like this anymore. <laughs> and Allison just it's like i can't believe that you thought that you could hide this shit between two pieces of bread <laughs> and tell me meanwhile viserys is like give me two bites of oh that sandwich God. please <laughs> also you know what's interesting this whole episode and maybe we'll get more of it in the future there or maybe we won't because maybe they're trying to tell me something about renera and how like sort of selfish and self-involved she is this whole episode allison talks about renera non-stop renera barely talks about Allison. It's true. At all. Mm -hmm. And I don't, is that like just who they are? (laughs) I don't know. It's interesting that like Rhaenyra doesn't seem to see, like clearly she feels a way about being called over to see her. Mm -hmm. And I still can't tell if she knows that Allison found out that she had fucked or because like Kristen going over to Allison feels very significant. But I don't know that she yeah. ever asked about that or like, mm-hmm. you know, like that's that's something that I would have been interested yeah. to see, not just for the sake of something should have happened to Kristen Cole, but also what's Rhaenyra's reaction to him behaving like this and then being taken in by Allison yeah. after like Allison without the information that she that we have as an audience knowing why she's doing it. It just looks like she decided to adopt him as a, who, who he who just murdered somebody brutally in front of everybody mm-hmm. for no reason. Because like right. the, the common the what's the word I want? The common gossip is about Rhaenyra and Damon. It is not about Rhaenyra and Kristen. What is the story that she's been told or other people have been told as to why he switched? Yeah, I'm really curious. I feel like there's one 
throwaway comment that they might make uh, about Cole. I think maybe Harwin and Rhaenyra may be a joke, but I can't remember exactly when it, or maybe it was Rhaenyra and Lena. I, I don't know. But it was it was something that felt kind of like, oh, he's still like holding a grudge or whatever. After all that, I thought he'd be over it by now or something. Mm. But I can't remember who said it and in what context. But other than that moment that I can't recall exactly, or no, it's it's Allison's reaction to the offer when she's storming up the stairs with Viserys. Oh, okay. Right. And Viserys is being like, yeah, I think this is a really good idea. And she's basically like, no, over my dead body. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is another moment that that's the king. (laughs) And he's just like, all right. Like, (laughs) I just, you guys, I don't know. If he's going to be that weak and she's going to have this much power, I need her to also be stronger while she's wielding this power. Mm -hmm. Allison, I mean, Mm -hmm. you know, if she is this strong, then I need her kind of standing in it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it feels like they want me to believe she has all this power, but also believe that she's got no power at all. And I, I just feel like they're having a hard time threading the needle. Yeah. And then I have the the same, but like inverted with Rhaenyra, who I am like my takeaway from the overall of the episode was I just was, she felt like weak and messy and like not in a position of strength. And I just didn't like any of it because, you know, I want her to win, but also a similar sort of, I have enough power that nobody can say the rumor to my face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But that power is very tenuous, you know? Yeah. And really doesn't sit with me at all, actually. Like, I act like it sits with me, but really it sits with my father, you know? Um, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Maybe it's just a balancing act. Maybe they just need to get their rhythm or something. <laughs> <laughs> There's just something about you, like... Going so hard and then at the end being like, I don't know, maybe they'll figure it out. You're just just, trying so hard to be generous. I I want to like, because I don't, my, I have no interest in watching something that just does not work Mm -hmm. for me, you know? So I always try to end on a like, well, maybe next week, (laughs) you know? (laughs) Indeed. Because it's better than the alternative, which is, oh, fuck, I got to watch this shit again. Like, nobody wants that. (laughs) I don't want to talk about it. Y'all don't want to listen to it. Oh, we skipped right over later being like, yeah, I'm going to just go with my friend and fight. (laughs) (laughs) Fucking Rhaenyra has to be like, "Um, okay, if you're going to make me order you, I'll do it. I didn't want to be in this position, but you're kind of uh, bailing on me in a way that is going to look really bad at this particular point in time. And you just do not seem to give a shit. Mm. And he says something about how, like, well, you said we would do our duties and then do what we want. And she's like, yeah. And part of our duty is, like, banding banding together as a family and showing a united front. Mm. But, okay, you could just be very bad at this whole part. (laughs) Um, So she eventually, like, convinces him to come with her to Dragonstone and he can bring a boyfriend with him. Mm -hmm. but that's the the only concession really so i love that she's like yeah we're gonna need all the swords we can (laughs) we can get (laughs) so what do you think about her uh going to dragonstone like what do you think is going to happen from here well i hope that it gives her a chance to surround herself with allies and uh not be scurrying through the rat infested halls of king's landing because we got more rats oh my god that's right um these rats it's a weird like i feel like they're trying to do something and i don't really know what it is but they're 100 percent really trying to do something i was like thinking you know about like corruption and decay and everything but bitch i don't maybe know. that is <laughs> all it is it's just like oh it's a it's a fancy castle but they still mm-hmm. have rats mm-hmm. i guess <laughs> But uh, it could just be like a nod to just how fucking you can't trust anybody in this bitch. It could be something as like basic as that. Um, I hope that they have a chance to like shore up who's on their side. That they are able to uh, like. I'm curious 
we Lena dies, and that's kind of a big deal. I don't know if the show will treat it like it's a big deal, but I feel like in story it's kind of important. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm curious. Uh, does Damon come home? And if so, Dragonstone is kind of low key his home too, right? Mm. He's not gonna. I mean, he could go to the Vale with his girls, but I don't think he's gonna. Right? The fact that he's been away, I'm assuming for a very long time, makes me feel like he maybe gave up on his claim. To uh, Runestone or wherever that place was called uh, that um, gotcha. Lady Rhea came from. Right. So In the text, I, feel- I think uh, they just like basically go, no, you're not getting it. And they give it <laughs> to the house. I don't know if, what they're doing with the show. Mm-hmm. but So I think like maybe Damon and the girls will come home as well. And uh, maybe when, even though everybody probably could look at these children and probably be like, yeah, those aren't, those aren't his kids. <laughs> I think for the sake of what it means, she can surround herself with people who will keep up the spirit of the lie. And I think people who would be willing to do that would be uh, Corliss and Reynas, maybe, because they are invested in seeing their son be king consort. Um, So maybe we get some fucking strength around us. But also there's a time jump, so I don't know. You know, without knowing how much of a time jump, maybe by the time we next week, she's been at Dragonstone for 10 years and now they're leaving already. And I don't get to see any of that shit. It doesn't end up mattering at all. Maybe they're maybe next week it's been 10 years and now they're making their way back to King's Landing because Viserys is dying or some shit. Like, I don't I don't know. (laughs) Yeah, I didn't hear that there was a second time jump. So that's really. That's surprising to me. I mean. It's not surprising in that, like, I understand story-wise why you would do it, but I don't feel like doing them this close together is a good idea. Yeah. And, like, again, I, to be fair, I don't know if the time jump is next week or if we just get another one before the season is over. So Mm -hmm. I'll put that out there. It might not even be next week, you guys. It might just be one more before the end of the season. Even if it's not, though, like, two per season feels too much. You should do one time jump per season. I just, they're rushing. I mean, rushing, this is the third one. You know, they're Th- rushing in a way that I find really weird because, like, everybody's talking about, well, we want to get to the good stuff, but it doesn't matter. It's not good stuff if nothing makes sense together. Yeah. And, like, this was the biggest time jump, but it, it this is the third one. I guess there was the, the two-year one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Ugh, there, yeah. Was, uh, there was the jump from... Uh, finding out that he's going to marry Allison to her, like having a two-year-old, mm-hmm. and then we jumped again because there was an, the next episode. Uh, she had a kid, like the daughter was born, right, right, and was like a t- like you know the third one. Mm-hmm. Well, she's the second one. She's, she's the, the second, second but yeah. but still. So they've been doing like the little jumps: two years here, you know, three years here, and then this ten-year one. Mm. so i don't know i don't know guys i know we were kind of all over the place There's probably some scenes we didn't actually talk about i think it's fine it's fine i don't think you wanted to hear me talk too much longer about what i didn't like so <laughs> <laughs> i'm also just fascinated at the like way that a lot of people who have been liking it so far are the 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 people who haven't read the book tend to be the ones who feel like this episode didn't work and people who have read the books are the most excited for the time jump because now they feel like they're getting somewhere. Mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I, I feel like that says a lot that like nobody has really felt like they're, it, it doesn't work together. If the both types of viewers are feeling like lost at different points. Right. I, um, the end of the episode happened. So it's like just playing through and the recap is happening. Mm -hmm. And I just, I just need to say, (laughs) I need to read it. So it says, um, it's talking about the, the pressure that Rhaenyra is under. And is this uh, like the director or, uh, it doesn't have their name underneath. I'm sorry. Okay. But, uh, okay. Right now it's Emma Darcy. And they say, uh, talking about Rhaenyra, they say, um, the, she, Renera, has been under pressure and the pressure has been percolating for too long. And it seems that finally Renera has reached a point where the lie is too much to bear. And then it cuts to the small council scene 
and uh, where Renera is making the proposition about the kids getting married. And then the actor, Emma Darcy, says overhead, there's this fear of ill feeling being fed to her father is so present in Renera that it sits on her. Of being what to her father? Basically, the fear that Renera has that Allison has been poisoning her father against her oh. is so overwhelming that Renera can barely stand it. She doesn't spend a single scene in this episode with her father. Exactly. Except the small council meeting. Oh, and then also when he comes to see the baby, but there's never any, like, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But that's what the actors is saying about this episode the, and saying that it's apparent, which, okay. Is that a pun? <laughs> <laughs> oh, here we go. So then it cuts to the scene with Damon and it says, uh, that's a marriage slowly unraveling in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> this is them talking about their own episode, y'all. This is the, the showrunners, the directors. This is This is what they think they put on screen. We've already had one person die in childbirth and it just felt like we didn't want to do that again. So she's going to go out like a warrior. Right. Mm Y'all, please join us next week. (laughs) (laughs) Well, hopefully we talk about a better episode than the one we got this time. (laughs) All right, guys. We love you very much. Until next time. Toodaloo, motherfuckers. Bye, guys.